Hey, this is Dirty Funny Expert back in our Parisian studio, and we're gonna keep talking about our track Scorpion. All right, so let's focus on the lead right now. Yeah, we'll uh, the lead, I think we added like pretty much at the last minute. It's like one of the last element we added. I mean, we've been playing this track out a little bit in DJ set and stuff, and yeah, it was definitely missing something. We had all the, the, the back of the track, but yeah, we definitely needed a lead in there. And uh, I don't remember, like, I think we you did a lead and like we came out, I don't know exactly. Okay. I don't know, because, because Anonymous, we were going back after playing Anonymous again, and we have this like very lead in the front, and we're like, oh shit, this is definitely what we need yeah, the in thing, this track too. The thing is like, the, the, the track was dropping without the lead, so. Think like a scorpion. Now that's the track with the lead. So we get the ID. Um, I think I think I was on the phone with you when when we did that, and and I, I think I played it live from directly. Oh, really? From here, okay. yeah. I was telling you, oh, oh that, yeah, yeah, that, that's yeah. a pendulum vibe, or that's yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a, a kind of like those vibes, and that's, um, yeah, that's that's the, the the main lead sound. So I played also with a vibrato, which is on the mode wheel there. So uh, let's look at the patch. That's the main. That's the main lead. Uh, there's other leads, so let's take a look. Yeah, there was different layers, but that's the main one. Yeah, let's take a look and at the... And it's open I... a serum! Yay! Yeah. Here, what a surprise! Let's take a look at the uh, at the serum. I will, like, bypass maybe all the... Yeah, all the effects. All the effects, just to see, because it's... Like, most of the leads are basically just sows, like unison and detune sows. So that's the... Basis, so it's just two detune sows, then a distortion, delay, reverb, uh, EQ, and once again the multi bone compressor. So it's like really wet uh, sound, uh, but like we've uh, compiled it with another really mono sound, which is here. So um, basically, like the sound is so wide that uh, we needed kind of a mono uh, layer. So it's just like there, always there. Like uh, there's always cases where I'm gonna be on a MacBook Pro listening to a tune, and sometimes when things are too spread out, it doesn't really fit quite well on those types of speakers, car speakers. Yeah, nowadays uh, everybody listens to music on their phones, on their laptop speakers. Yeah. So you really have to make sure you still hear every single element, and your, your lead has to like be straight on point, obviously. And that, so yeah, that helps a lot. And, and that kind of a silly lead, I will, uh, I will call that silly, silly lead. lead, yeah. <laughs> It, it, it's just nothing on its own, but when you actually layer it uh, with the with the original one, uh, it gives that kind of extra mono stuff that that you can like that makes it compatible for for those speaker for the small speakers, so cars and MacBooks. Um, I also have like another uh, layer. another layer, which is. Uh, the most, it's, I think it's like a unison layer. Let's do take. exactly the opposite. Yeah, exactly. So it's like much more higher as you can hear. And it's, it's almost the same, uh, oh, see it's the Anonymous lead. Ah, there you go. <laughs> we layered it with the Anonymous lead. And uh, it's almost the same kind of patch, you know, like distortion, delay, reverb, and stuff. Except, uh, except it's just one octave much, higher. yeah, one octave higher and much more like spread out. So uh, in a way, we can like mix stuff that are really large and stuff that are a little bit less larger. So I, I think it gives a much more fatness to the to the lead. And that's it, like. Uh, that's how we did.
first time, first thing we did is like we have put the all lead in the side chain, and it wasn't really working well. So um, yeah, it was too much. It was just yeah, it was not too much. Talking. I mean, yeah, yeah, and, and, and like the kicks and the snares were like getting the leads out. Yeah. So um, what we did is like some of the leads, for example, the mono lead and the unison lead, they are like uh, side chained, as the main as the main one is not side chained. So basically, when the kick and the snares are gonna hit, they're just gonna shut the unison and the mono lead, and not the main one. And and that's how we found the right bounce, I would say, for the lead in the track. All right, so let's uh, let's have a look at the FX section. Um, it's something that we like doing very much because it adds a lot of organic feeling to the song. Uh, something that's a little less, um, you know, midi, I guess. Um, so yeah, what we like to do is either find samples like different random samples in sample banks, in contact banks, you can find lots of things on YouTube as well. And the whole idea is to help um, explaining how you place your song like where you see it kind of like give it a, a more of a visual feeling and trigger this with sounds um, in this case you know because the whole concept of the song is the scorpion and we were thinking about you know a deserty space super hot lots of sand obviously um, and yeah and to give this uh, general feeling we went and dug a bit of everywhere and found these different samples that we're going to play all together at once and um, and that yeah that gives this general feeling that helps um, creating the whole story behind the song. That's the first effect. Right. So it's a lot of, like, a lot of uh, little sounds that are more in the background. They don't need to be like too much in your face. The whole idea is just to emphasize the general feeling. Um, there's actually one plugin that we love to use for these affixes, and in this case, like swooshes, for example, is Ryzen Hits. They did like a super sick plugin where you can choose a different uh, beginning and tail of your sound and modulate them separately. Basically, uh, we, we've been so much through different uh, I would say swoosh, rises. banks, and rises. Like, uh, we love to do them, like, whether it's on a synth, you know, where if it's gonna be like a noise mm -hmm. rise or anything, we'll do it manually with a synth, a noise oscillator, and, you know, trying to, I would say, filter, um, reverb, uh, you know, the, the, the sound. And uh, rise and hit is a much more convenient way to get, like, those kinds of, like, same swooshes that you get in banks, except it's all stacked and you can like make them longer or anything. So that's the main, like, that's the main thing. It's like you can really play with the length and uh, that's, that's convenient. So what we will do is like just use an instance, for example, like that. And if I'm liking uh, these presets, I will just like render it, you know. Once again, it's all about the the the, the rendering part, which is really convenient to just like, you know, throw sound up mm -hmm. there. So that's I can show it. So yeah, what's really like, cool like here is do. that you can decide that you want the sound to start on four bars and then have a tail of four or no, maybe two, um, which is more convenient than being like, oh, I have this thing, but I got to stretch it. I'm losing quality. So yeah, and so basically, if I wanted like a smaller swoosh, I would just like bounce it from there, mm -hmm. and I might just keep the same instance of uh, contact and use it for another break with a, another length. Right. So uh, we use it like, like kind of is, it was like a, a guitar that's plugged, and we'll be like playing one note and the other notes and just record it, and that's how we kind of make our. Most of our effects, you know, instead yeah, of like it. scrolling through samples, uh, I, I find it convenient just to get those kind of machines that are just like limited in their way, but they they do really their job in a great way. Yeah.
Um, and the thing is, like, with sample banks, you can, like, always go to the same rises and FXs because you know they work. You've used them in previous songs. Uh, and, and it's easy to go back to doing the same thing, and it's something that we try to avoid uh, a lot. So at least using a plugin to do this, you know, there's a, a very few chances that you're going to have the exact same sound. And so basically, once we have, um, you know, the main uh, FX section and breakdown section done, um, we do have the more storytelling part of the song before it actually drops, and that's going to lead us to the vocals on the song. Uh, we had the theme, the Scorpion theme that we were working around with. We put these FXs, FXs in to give more of a story, and uh, then I think we originally found some samples online, but we didn't really want to do that. So we kind of like ended up recording our own vocal samples. Um, and then we have a great friend in Los Angeles that um, records a lot of voices for uh, movies and commercials. commercials and whatnot. And we contacted him. He has like this super typical, you know, American trailer kind of voice. Um, and he redid what we sent him. And that's much better than if we... Actually, he, re <laughs> he redid kind of a old script that you wrote for him, but I think we ended up like using just uh, keywords. But yeah, he, he true. wrote he wrote the whole story. We we, we we had like a kind of a, like a scenario going on, but he wasn't quite well fitting the track. It was too much, and we were like this intro is mysterious. Yeah, it, it, it was too busy between like yeah. the vocals and the bass and the FXs. It was too much, and we couldn't find a way to make it work uh, as we liked. So we ended up just keeping the last sample, but. Uh, it, it gives a lot of dimension to the whole song, and, and I think it really it works really well with that kind of like movie inspired breakdown. Yeah, so there's not much. I mean, uh, we've done already a recording session mm -hmm. for that, which is another another session, and we kind of bounced the whole uh, treatment already. So there's not much treatment. You know, I've added just a DSR and bunch of delays, like, yeah. you know, dub station, I love that delay, that's just simple. We've been using it for years. Uh, the Pro Air, which is right now our, um, our reverb to go, and uh, once again, another Pro Q. Big and filters. Yeah, and <laughs> I mean, I mean, that, that, that pre-drop stuff, you know. Here, like the, the, the main stuff was just like trying to create the build up with the, with the voice. And start so. introducing these kind of like frequencies before you actually hear the pre drop vocals. Stay like a scorpion. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, we actually left some air um, behind the main vocals to make it more sound more natural in a way. Yeah, that's it. And that and the FX, you know, kind of makes kind of makes Sing it all. like a scorpion. Yeah, that works. That's it. So now uh, I'm going to talk about uh, the way we master uh, the full track. Uh, we use uh, isotome ozone and um, we have like more orthodox way to do stuff and more unorthodox way to do other stuff. So basically that's the main EQ. Um, I mean, this mix wasn't uh, so bad, so we didn't add much, you know. I just added this like notch at 1K, which gives a little bit more volume, I guess, you know, presence. Um, the main treatment is all about the, the multiband compression. So, um, the way we do it is, uh, I'm going to play the track so we can see the levels. Here you can see like, uh, sub, like I'm, I'm like the first band, which is like from 20 hertz to 182. Uh, I don't even like compress it, you know, see the ratio here is at one. Um, the main goal is like, uh, I don't like compressing stuff uh, under like those frequency because um, I don't need to actually. Um, most, most of the subs we do are already like uh, volume aligned. So um, the, way, the way we compress stuff is like much more on the mid lows. Uh, here, for because, example, because we do a lot of the treatment during the mix process. Yeah, and and and, and 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 subs don't really, 
you know, accept compression. You know, you can, uh, you can uh, like change frequently and harmonically a sub when you when you uh, distort it, compress it, you know, and, and the, the main thing is like ours is already ready, so we don't touch those. Second band is like uh, from 182 to 2 kilohertz, and there is like the main part where I will squash the sound mostly, and it's not even squashed, it's just like a ratio of two, um, fairly, you know, slow attack, 47, 47, so we still keep the transient, you know. Um, on the, the treble, I don't compress that much either, you know, see that's a 1.5 ratio, and for the last band, it's gonna be like, not even there. Not, I, I've not even compressed the last one, but usually I just compress it just a little bit to give it a little bit more crunch. But most of the, um, the treble, Treatment's gonna be in, in the exciter. As we can hear, like, uh, it gives a lot of air, especially like uh, the retro treatment here is the most violent, I, I would say, on the trebles. It gives really just the impression you've just like really boost the whole 10, 10 Ks, you know, even, even though here uh, it's from 2K, uh, to, to two kilohertz, most of the most of these effects really covers uh, the air and and lifts li lift it up, you know, in, in terms of treble. So, um, and lastly, before the limiter, we have uh, imager. I don't use it in every track. On this track. Um, like it's on every band uh, from 200 hertz. So basically, I probably looked at the the main the main the main pan and it wasn't open enough. So see, usually I make something that's more graduate. You know, usually I will do something that's more like you know not even present on the first ones uh, on the first bands. And from uh, I would say one or two kilohertz trying to um, gradually, you know, make things wider and wider as soon as, uh, as soon as you get in more treble frequencies. And to finish up things, uh, the limiter, which is like, you know, I mean, I'm not gonna give a tutorial how limiter works, but like basically, you know, you just like bring down your threshold un until it's really bad and then you get it up until it's good. And, you know, it's all about like, you know, really, testing out and then, then just listening in different environments. That's how we do it, you know what I mean? And uh, here I've put the IRC LL, but usually I use the, the IRC4. IRC4. For illustration purposes, yeah. it was the yeah, exactly. processor to go on the LL. So yeah, basically that's the main stuff. And sometimes when, especially in this case, um, when I feel that like maybe the limiter has gone too much on the kicks and the snares, instead of changing my volumes of kick and snares, what I would do is like use the dynamic EQ in a very unorthodox way. So um, you can see here on the first band that uh, it's always, uh, the gain is always uh, up there, but it's just triggering, the volume is gonna be just triggered um, when, when it passes a certain threshold in those frequency. So basically it's a, like a kick booster mm -hmm. and the third band is exactly the same for the snare. So visually we can see here the kicks and the snare getting boosts in frequency on the overall master. And that gives like a, a more, I would say not transient, but more attack to like the main frequency of the sound which is gonna make it stand out. So that's the whole purpose of using that dynamic EQ. And, and, and I find it very musical in a way because you're acting on the whole mix, but it doesn't really break the sound or like gives you any face problem when it's not on. You know, it's just on the kicks and the snare is gonna be triggered and it's gonna boost the right frequency at the right time. 
All right, guys, this is it for today. Thanks for hanging out with us. Hope you learned a lot of different things. Music is all about, you know, trying, trial and error, experimenting. And sharing. And sharing, like today. So, yeah, check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Spotify, SoundCloud. These all of them. Reddit, I don't know. Blah, 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 at Dirty Phonics. Um, Scorpion is out, should be out, will be out very soon. Anyways, listen to the track, blast it loud, keep in touch. Bye-bye. Peace.